Hi guys and welcome back to my video. Today is release day for the Biggie Barn Star quilt. This was a viewer request. I had so much fun making it and I can't wait to share it with you all as well. So I know a lot of you are following along with our 2023 Sew With Me series and block number eight was a huge hit and I had several requests to make it into a full size quilt and somebody had suggested to make it larger. So I went ahead and took block number eight from our Sew With Me super sized it into two different size choices and made a pattern out of it. So the Biggie Barn Star pattern includes two different quilt projects. Number one is a huge like wall hanging. That one finishes I think at 42 by 42. So it's a perfect wall hanging size. It's perfect to go like in your bedroom on the wall, your living room, or even decorate your sewing space. So Biggie Barn Star does include a huge barn star. And then I also wanted to make a full size quilt with it as well. So it also includes a 96 by 96 quilt in the pattern as well. These, that's the one that's right here behind me. And these stars finish at about 24 inches each. So they are good size. And then the finished quilt, like I said, is 96 by 96. It's a little bit big. I did want something to go over my bed. We have a king size bed, so that's gonna be great for that. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, it is huge. If you wanted to downsize this just slightly, you could um, uh, omit all of the outer borders. I did three outer borders, so I did one in the regular background color. I did a skinny red border and then I did a wide low volume border. So just by eliminating those three borders, you can uh, make this quilt just a little bit smaller. You could also use the block from block number eight. Those are 12 inch blocks and follow the same layout for this. Um, you're just gonna need to adjust some of your yardage and whatnot um, to make it you know, a, into a smaller quilt. So for this quilt, I used my regular Moda 9900-97 white background. It's a nice creamy white. It is a prepared for dye fabric. So if you are worried about colors bleeding, you might wanna go with their 9900-200. It's a little, I think I think it's called ivory so it's definitely more of like an off-white but when you're using it in a quilt um, if it's not sitting right next to a bright white it's still kind of a nice neutral white the fabric that I used was my stash of Sweetwater Christmas prints so there are prints from a bunch of different lines in here mostly their newer lines I think I have snow kissed and blizzard in there but there are also some older lines in there I have some Holly's tree farm in my center star and just some whatever I had in my stash I have a ton of their Christmas fabrics because because I love them. And so every year when they do a Christmas line, I always buy a bunch of it and I have a bunch of them to play with when the holidays roll around. And one cool thing about Sweetwater Fabrics, especially with their Christmas lines, is they tend to go together pretty well. Sometimes the greens are a little bit off or the blues are a little bit off, but for the most part, you can kind of mix and match all of those. So if you have stash left over from last year and they release a new line this year, you can kind of blend those together. Carry It Catching Stitches did do a kit for this, so I will have a link for her her website below as well. Hers is not exactly like mine because like I said, I worked from my stash, but she got pretty close with them and she has the same amount of like blues and reds and whatnot. So the prints might not be identical, but they are Sweetwater prints and it'll look almost identical to mine. The backing on this quilt is Sweetwater Blizzard Red Pine Plaid. It's just a really fun plaid. It's got a few different colors in there, so I thought it blended well. And one thing I like doing, especially with my Christmas quilts, is making sure that I have a fun backing on them because when you put them on beds and fold them down, you want that backing to be just as cute as the front. You can even do a piece to backing or a minky backing. Those are also great. I've also used the Luxe Fleece from Joanne Fabrics. It's super soft. Um, that one I don't usually quilt on because it's so thick, but I think I could probably pull it off on my long arm. I just was having a hard time on my Juki uh, TL2000 that you see in my videos here, just because it was so thick, but I think it would work on the long arm. But I always like putting fun fuzzy backings on my Christmas quilts to make them extra snuggly. The binding is also a sweet water red and I didn't quite have enough of the one that I was gonna use. So I actually threw a couple other pieces in there just to make it long enough. So it's a little bit of a scrapping binding, but it's all red. So if you're not looking too closely, you kind of can't really tell. But I also thought it gave it just a little bit of like extra so if somebody is looking closely they'll be like oh these are two fun prints and I just thought they went together really well and doing scrappy bindings is also a great way to use up some of those leftover fabrics as well for the backing I also did do a personalized label my labels are all from Sweetwater fabrics for my quilts they do the best personalized label I'm part of their tag subscription I have mentioned this before and I will link it below but if you go to the sweetwaterco.com website and click on subscriptions they have a tagged subscription 
and it's basically a personalized label subscription. So they send you labels every single month. They're usually seasonal. Some are just kind of generic, um, you know, that you could use any time of the year, but they are all personalized. And so far there, I've not been disappointed in any of them. They are all absolutely adorable and perfect for labeling your quilt projects. This quilt is fat quarter friendly. So you will see on the fabric requirements that I do use a variety of fat quarters. You basically need five aqua, five red, five green, and five low volume fat quarters to make this and then a little bit extra for those borders. And I made mine in Christmas just because I'm making it here in December, but also because these are just stars. It's Christmassy now, but it doesn't have to be Christmassy. So I think this quilt would be perfect in red, white, and blue for the patriotic season. So if I can, I will pop up a little graphic here for you so you can kind of get a vibe of what that would look like in patriotic fabrics. Now, because these blocks were so large, oversized, I kind of wanted to do the same thing with my quilting. So instead of doing a tight quilting design, I went ahead and just did big flowy quilting. It also made it go a lot faster because this quilt is so large. And I just did big swirls, I did big holly leaves, and then I did those big snowflakes. And this is what I did on my um, Cup of Cheer quilt this year as well, just in a larger format. Not only did it make my quilting go a little bit faster, <laughs> which is what I was kind of needing because I did want to get this done for you guys, but also the denser your quilt is, the less, less soft your quilt is. The quilting with all that thread can really make your quilt a little bit um, just like hard isn't the right word, but stiffer, I guess. And since this is a Christmas quilt, I did want it to be just more like soft and cozy. And so I just did a wider quilting on it and that allows for that. So when you put this in the wash, it still kind of crinkles up like a regular quilt, but just that since it's not such dense quilting, it just makes it a lot more cozy and squishy. And there's a lot of options with this one because of the sizing. So the 12 inch uh, block that I released for Sew With Me, if you did two 12 inch blocks next to one of the 24 inch blocks, that may be kind of cool. So you can kind of mix and match those all in one quilt. I don't have that all in the pattern, so you kind of have to do your own math there, but I did just want to throw it out for you because I thought it'd be a lot of fun. The other thing about this is since it's um, 24 by 24, it's also a great size for a table topper. So you could do one of these stars in any color that you wanted seasonal color and use that as a table topper for decorating your dining room table or your kitchen table. So lots of fun ideas for these. You could also use it as a pillow sham as well. Uh, a lot of the Euro shams are 24 inches by 24 inches. So there's another idea for you there as well. And I do have a couple of videos on how to do envelope back pillows um, for my quilted projects here on YouTube. So you can search my YouTube channel just for pillow and you should be able to find those options there as well. So that's the quilt version. I am also releasing a cross stitch version so we can talk about that really quickly as well. The cross stitch version is stitched on 14 count white Ada and I used all of the colors that I used in my cup of cheer. So there's pinks and blues and or pinks and aquas and reds and greens in there as well. And then I did a little kind of Holly looking ish border around it because again, I'm doing this in the holiday season, but you could also do this one in other colors as well. And I think it would be beautiful. Patriotic would be awesome as well. The other thing that would be really cool is if you did a colored background cloth. So maybe aqua or like a navy or a tea dye or anything like that. And then do a white or even variegated light colored thread and just do all the stars in that. That would actually be really cool as well. And one of my testers I think is going to do that. It's not done at the timing of this a video, but as soon as she is done with that, I will try and put those on Instagram. Um, she'll be posting it as well so you can get a few more ideas. Again, it's stitched on 14 count Ada with DMC floss. I always like to use DMC floss, at least right now, because that's easy, I know, for all of you to get. But you can always use any floss you like, the fancy floss, you know, anything that's like variegated or whatever you prefer to use in your stitching. If you stitch it on 14 count Ada like I am, it will be finishing at about five and a half inches by five and a half inches. So it's not overly huge stitch. It is good for beginners. One thing I would warn about this one though, if you are a beginner, is I would just mark the top of your fabric somehow with a little piece of tape or like a pin or even a wonder clip or something. So you remember which side is the top because since all of these stars are virtually the same, it's really easy to get that fabric turned at any degree while you're stitching. And pretty soon, you know, this used to be the top and pretty soon you, you've you know turned it like 90 degrees or even upside down and so your stitches are not gonna be all going the same way. 
Um, if you're new to cross stitching, definitely check out my how to cross stitch series here on YouTube. I have three or four parts on how to cross stitch covering all of the basics that you would need to know to get started. And I would consider this one a relatively beginner friendly pattern other than that it's easy to kind of turn around because all the stars are the same. If you're brand, brand new, I would recommend more getting started with one of my ornament series because they're tiny little pieces. So I have a classic ornaments. I have 12 days of stitchy ornaments. And then this year we re released the So Jolly ornaments, which I'm sure you've seen lately here on my channel. But those all finish really small, like around two to three inches or so. So they're great for beginners and they're all just cute little fun motifs. Um, but I do consider the Biggie Barn Star to be, I would say, still a beginner cross stitch. There's nothing complicated in there. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. I will say I had a piece that um, my pumpkin veil that I kept turning and I didn't want to go back and fix it. And honestly, it looks fine. So <laughs> don't be too hard on yourself if you're brand new and you accidentally get your piece, you know, tilted. Don't stress out about it. Don't tear anything out or worry about it. Just keep going and having fun. All right, so that is Biggie Barn Star Quilt and Biggie Barn Star Cross Stitch. Those are both available in my shop now. That's gonna be it for today's video. Leave me a comment below letting me know which version you would do. Would you do the quilty version or the stitchy version? I'm gonna be giving away one free pattern to one of you guys, so I'll pick from those comments. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you like this video. It is gonna be a PDF, so it is worldwide. And just let me know whether you're gonna do the quilting or the stitchy version. And if you're going to be doing the quilty version, I would love to hear which fabric line you would be using for this quilt. So that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You can get the Biggie Barn Star quilt cross stitch and quilt patterns in my store at store.confessionsofahomeschooler.com. And I will make sure to link that below this video as well. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you next time. That's it. Huh. Dog fur just filmed with Bodie. That one finishes at I think 40. Yeah. What are you doing? I could hear like jingling around out there. Love you. Smile. <laughs> I am. Okay. Bye, Bodie. It's about 42 by 42 is what that finishes at, I believe. Is that right? I've also used that really. It's I think it's called Lux Fleece from Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> Woo! What'd you do? Okay, red, Sweetwater Blizzard Red Pine Plaid. <sighs> the cross stitch finishes at... I hope you guys are gonna have fun with our Biggie Barn Star release, whether it's quilt or cross. Ooh, leave me that in the comments too. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Don't drop it, don't drop it. Hang on, I'm gonna do a... Thank you.